This workshop presents principles and quite a few methods that can be useful for mastering linear time. If you've taken conventional time management workshops, you'll probably find that little or none of this seminar is covered by those workshops. In spite of the importance of this material for practical time management and for optimizing our performance, health, and well-being. Besides conventional time management, which handles the objectives and tasks we do, there's inner time management, which optimizes how we do things. This is an inner time management workshop. It focuses on optimizing felt time or experiential time the way we actually experience and feel time rather than what tasks to do with our clock time. For people in all but the most routine jobs, learning and consistently using both conventional time management and inner time management methods is necessary to optimize our lives both personally and professionally. Neither conventional time management nor inner time management by itself resolves our issues with time. But by combining the discipline of planning and organizing what to do with methods of improving the way we do things, there's no limit to our productivity and well-being. Most workshops on time promise to help us get more done with less stress. Some even promise to lead to mastery of time. But how can we master time if we don't understand what time is? How can we get things done without feeling pressured, overwhelmed, or anxious about time if we don't know exactly what it is? This essential question of what time is is not dealt with by most conventional time management workshops and books. This is probably because it's a very difficult question. How would you answer the question, what is time? Typical conventional time management workshops only use one word for different aspects of time. We need some clarity about the different kinds of time. Here are some descriptions. Physical or event time is the continual occurrence of physical and experiential events. The word event is used to describe something that happened or is happening now, like getting up in the morning or noticing that you're hungry. A second face of time is symbolized by the faces of clocks and watches, different tools for measuring event time. Different cultures measure event time in different ways. These measurements allow us to compare and coordinate our activities. The third face of time is the one that is probably most important for our happiness, although it's also probably the face that is least understood and most undervalued. Here we will call it personal or psychological time, though it might also be called experienced time. It includes all the different ways we feel or experience time. We may feel time move quickly when we're having a great time. During some of the best moments of our lives, things seem timeless, with little or no feeling of time passing. We feel time drag or pass slowly when we're bored or having a bad time. We feel anxious about time when it seems we don't have enough of it. Our feeling of time passing sets up familiar problems. Time pressure, anxiety, overwhelm, and the feeling we don't have enough time. Rather than mirroring an external flow, our feeling of time passing is just 
the aggregate result of resisting past negative experiences. A composite of repressed energy, the feeling of time passing, is independent of external physical events and speeds. In other words, our feeling of speed and time pressure is a product of past resisted experiences and not a measure of current external forces or events. A very important part of felt time for Westerners is called linear time, a sense of horizontal time flow among past, present, and future that moves at the same unchangeable speed for all of us. Finally, though it's a kind of lack of any feelings of time passing, timelessness can also be considered a kind of personal time. Linear time is a term that represents the usual way that most adults in the West experience time. In the linear view, time is like a conveyor belt that moves horizontally at a constant and unchangeable speed between past, present, and future rooms in our experience. Time feels like it's out of our control. Linear time is a major feature of our Western cultural worldview. It portrays time as an absolute physical reality and says that the passage of time is independent of consciousness. So from a linear time worldview, it doesn't matter what you think, feel, or do, or how you look at time, time doesn't change. As a result, we may feel some helplessness and think we can only adapt to this reality and perhaps try somehow to keep up with the flow of time. We can take a simple measure of time stress so we can compare levels of stress that we experience and then learn to control the stress. On a scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is the least and 10 is the most, how much stress do you feel about time right now? Make a mental note about what this number is right now. 